For our next set of movies, we're going to talk about Rewire. Rewire is a software protocol that allows multiple audio programs to talk to each other. Well, what do we mean by talk to each other? Here, in this case, we're talking about these programs sending audio between them and also control information. We're using Pro Tools as these are Pro Tools tutorials, and we'll be using Reason 4 and Ableton Live as our rewire, rewire applications. However, it should be noted that Logic and GarageBand, two other very popular digital audio workstation programs, also include Rewire, as does Cubase, Sonar, and a whole host of other programs. Uh, so for this movie, we'll just talk about Rewire basics and how to get an instance of Rewire started. The most important thing is that you need to make sure that the host is running first. The host in this case is Pro Tools, but if you're using Logic or Digital Performer or any other um, DAW program, you'll get that started first. And with some of the Rewire applications like Reason, it'll even say um, you need to start the host first. Make sure you do not have the Rewire application running. So I'm going to use Reason 4. So I do not have it running right now. I'm going to let Pro Tools start it. It really depends on what program you're using. If you need to start your program, your, like Logic or Pro Tools, and then separately start the Rewire application or have the DAW program start it for you. In Pro Tools case, it will actually um, start the program. I've got a blank session here, it's a blank canvas, and we're going to go through the process of just setting up Rewire. First thing is we're going to use an instrument track to host our Rewire application. We'll use a MIDI track to send notes to the Rewire application, and we'll use an audio track to capture audio from the Rewire application. So I'll create all three of those at once. Stereo instrument track, a MIDI track, and a stereo audio track. Let's rename them. I'm going to call the instrument track Reason 4. Uh, command and the down arrow jumps me to the next track. Reason Notes. And Reason Audio. Head to the mix window. To start up Reason in rewire mode, I'll go to the instrument track, and on the top insert, just as I would with a virtual instrument, I'll choose multi-channel plugin, instrument, and I see Reason is listed. And as well, for you Ableton folks, there's Ableton Live. We'll use that in another movie. As soon as I click Reason, now I get a pop-up window, and Reason will start. Now, in rewire, you're using another application at the same time as your uh, DAW host. So in this way, it's sort of like a plugin. A plugin extends the functionality of the DAW host, but it's a very small program compared to the DAW host. Here, this is actually running Reason. This isn't stripped. This isn't uh, some sort of lighter version. So you need to be really mindful of your hardware resources. So in Pro Tools, we'll go to Setup and Choose Playback Engine. You may want to set your hardware buffer size high. If you've got multi-cores, you can set your processor cores higher or lower. Um, I would recommend setting them lower, especially if you have four cores like this machine does, uh, because you don't want all the cores devoted to just Pro Tools. You want to leave some room for the rewire application. And as well, the CPU usage limit should be set lower, so that way Pro Tools doesn't hog all the CPU. I find 70% in this case is going to work well for me. Now when I go to Reason, I'm given here a blank rack because that's what I've chosen to um, start up with in Reason. And I'm not going to go into how to use Reason because these are Pro Tools tutorials and maybe I'll be so inclined to create Reason tutorials. But for now, I'll just do some basics in Reason. First thing is, notice that the Reason Hardware interface says Rewire Slave Mode, so that's an indication that Reason is in um, Rewire Mode, which is good. When Rewire Mode is enabled, 
the two transports of both Reason and Pro Tools are linked. So if I press play on the Reason transport, play on the Pro Tools transport will play. As well, as you see the playhead move in Reason, the playhead is also moving in Pro Tools. So that's really cool. Uh, and in another movie, we're going to talk about using Pro Tools as a sort of high-end tape deck um, for your Ableton Live or Reason projects. For now, we're going to create a very simple synthesizer in Reason and then control it in Pro Tools. So here to the right, you see a listing of the different synthesizers that can be used in Reason. As well, they can be accessed under the Create menu. I'll drag out a Thor, hit Tab, and I connect the audio output to the Reason Hardware interface. So what's important, you got to note where it's going. So this Thor, Output 1 and 2, is go headed to Output 1 and 2 on the Reason Hardware interface. Now just to demonstrate why this is important, I'm going to connect it to 25 and 26. Okay. Now in Pro Tools, when I click on the Reason plugin, I have this box here, this box that says Rewire. It says Reason, Mix L, Mix R. If I click on that, I'm given all of the inputs of the Reason hardware interface. That's why I wanted to note that I connected it to 25 and 26, so I will actually select 25 and 26. So what this is doing, this is saying, okay, where in Reason is the audio coming from? It's coming from channel 25 and 26. And as you would guess, you can actually have multiple instrument tracks uh, taking inputs from various parts of the Reason hardware interface. So you can uh, get some discrete mixes. Now that I've got that set, I'll tab back over to Reason and as I press notes on my MIDI keyboard, I certainly hear them. And then as I look at Pro Tools, you can see the audio coming into the virtual instrument track. But then how would you send MIDI to uh, Reason using Pro Tools? Well, the same way you would using a virtual instrument, take a look at the output. And now you see Thor, channel two. Hardware interface, channel one. Well, we're using the Thor, so let's choose that. And when I write notes on the Reason Notes track, they should play uh, using the Thor. So let's go to the edit window. And you see that as I click notes in, they're being sent from Pro Tools to Reason. Here, let's zoom in. And make the grid a bit smaller. There we go. And now when I play, I can use Reason as a virtual instrument essentially, compose all my notes in Pro Tools, and then, you know, get take advantage of all the sounds in Reason. Why this is beneficial is that software is expensive, and certainly there are means to attain software that are not necessarily um, kosher and legal. But a lot of, and I want to say that I don't condone that, but a lot of um, workstation programs will ship with things like Reason Adapted or Ableton Live Lite. And through using Rewire, you can actually use these programs in combination to expand your sonic palette without having to... Um, invest any more money. And in Reason, there's a lot of software instruments, there's a lot of combinations to do. I mean, it's a separate program, so it, it would require a good amount of study. But you actually have a lot at your disposal without having to sink some more money into extra plugins. Uh, so we'll get into, in the next few movies, um, sort of methodologies for using Rewire and mindsets. That is, when would you write notes into Reason? When would you write them into Pro Tools? For instance, if I tab back over to Reason, I can actually write notes into Reason and they would be played back. Uh, it, it's sort of like when we were using Structure Free in the Virtual Instrument series 
and you could mute or solo in structure free or you could mute or solo in the mix window. You want to develop a single methodology that you're consistent with. But I could write notes and they would be played back both in Pro Tools and in Reason. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and when we talk about using Reason as a, or Pro Tools rather, as a virtual tape deck, this will become uh, really clear.